Hi there. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create a 3D NFT collection in Blender. To do this, we're going to be using a free open source Blender add-on I created called Blend My NFTs. I'm really excited to show you all a new version I recently released that makes it easier than ever to do this. The best part about this tutorial is you don't even need to know how to code. Let's get into it. To follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need to download two things, the Blend My NFTs add-on and the example Blender file, both of which you can find links to in the description. Okay, so the first link in the description will take you to this link. Now this is a GitHub repository where you can download the code for the Blender add-on. So let's go ahead and do that. First, we'll click on this green code dropdown. Next, let's click download zip. This will download the Blend My NFTs add-on as a zip file to our downloads folder. So now that we have the add-on downloaded on our computer, we can go ahead and install it to Blender. So I have it here in this directory. Let's go ahead and open Blender up. The first thing that we're gonna do is go to Edit, Preferences, and this will open up the Blender Preferences section. Let's navigate to this add-on tab. We'll click the Install button. This will take us to the Blender file view. Now here we can navigate to that zip file we just downloaded. For me, it's in this directory here. It might be different for you, or you can directly install it from your downloads folder if you prefer. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this zip file here. Let's click Install Add-on, and now it's installed. So if we search for it here in the add-ons search bar, we see it appear here. Now, in order to enable the add-on, we need to click this check button. And after we've done that, we can head back to the layout tab here and if this doesn't appear for you, you can just press the end key on your keyboard and it'll open up this side panel here. Now you've installed the Blend My NFTs add-on. To go any further, we need a Blender file to use with this software. If you navigate to the second link in the description, it will take you to this GitHub repository here. Here you can find three example Blender files that are all compatible with the Blend My NFTs add-on. For this tutorial, we're just going to be using this cozy place example.blender file, so let's go ahead and download it. We'll click on this link right here, and this will take us to the main page where the file is located. Then we can individually download this Blender file. We'll click the download button here, it'll appear down here. Now we've downloaded it, so let's go ahead and open it. So I have the cozy place example file here in this directory. I'm going to open it up. And here we can see Blend My NFTs compatible Blender file. Now, if you notice in the scene, all of these collections are structured in a very specific way. This is important, and I'll explain it in the next section. Now, for you to understand how 3D NFT collections are made, you need to understand three main terms that are necessary to operate the Blend My NFTs add-on successfully. If we navigate back to the first link in the description, we can scroll down and see the README file for the Blend My NFTs add-on. This page is hyper detailed and contains much more information than this video. So if you're looking for a more comprehensive guide on how to use Blend My NFTs and its capabilities, I'd suggest reading through this documentation. For now, the section that we're going to be focusing on can be found in the table of contents. If we scroll down, let's locate important terminology right here. This will take us to the important terminology section. So the first term I want to talk to you about is an attribute. Now when you think of an NFT collection, it typically has things about it that change from NFT to NFT. Let's take a look at these Cozy Place NFTs. This NFT collection was made by this Cozy Studio using the Blend My NFTs add-on. These are still available for Mint, and you can find your Cozy Place NFT at thiscozystudio.com, the link of which is in the description. To understand what attributes are, pay attention to the background of each image. The backgrounds are different for each one, but they all contain a background. The idea and location of this background is called an attribute, so we will refer to it as the background attribute. This attribute can have many variants. Now that term variance refers to each possible background that can be swapped into the background attribute. If you're used to thinking about NFTs in terms of two dimensions, an attribute is similar to a layer. But because we're dealing with 3D space, this fundamentally changes what a layer can be and thus new terminology is required to understand this concept in a better way. 
If you need more information about how attribute and variants work with BlendMy NFTs, then check out the README file I mentioned earlier. It has more detail on how these affect your workflow and your finished NFT product. Organizing your NFTs, attributes, and variants is essential to the NFT generation process. To ensure your Blender file is compatible with the Blend My NFTs add-on, review and follow all the rules listed here in this Blender organization file structure section of the Blend My NFTs README file. Read over these rules very carefully because if you do not follow them, the Blend My NFTs add-on will not work properly and your NFT collection will not be generated. Now we can finally start the generation process. So let's go back to this cozy place example file and let's get started. The first step in generating NFTs with the Blend My NFTs add-on is to create your NFT data. Now, Blend My NFTs needs data to understand your Blender file and your scene collection structure. In this step, you will create that data. First of all, let's set the name of our NFT collection. So for this example, I'll just use Cozy Place. We can do that in this field right here called NFT name. This name will be the name of our NFT collection and the extension added to every single NFT file that we create. Next, let's set the size of our NFT collection. If you notice this number here, max number of NFTs, this number represents the maximum number of NFTs that we can generate. So our collection needs to be less than this number. So let's set it to four, just as an example. The next thing we're gonna do is set the NFTs per batch. Now, Blend My NFTs batches NFTs to make it easier to handle when rendering large amounts of NFTs. So let's set two NFTs per batch, just for this example. The next thing we're gonna do is set the save path. So let's navigate here, we'll click this button. This will open up the Blender file view. Now, I have my save path set to this directory here. You can have it wherever you want, in your desktop or whatever folder that's easily accessible. For now, I'm just gonna click accept, and now my save path is set. The next thing I'm gonna do is click this enable rarity checkbox. Now this will take into account the weights that are set here in this collection structure. The last thing that we have to do is simply just press this create data button. Now you've completed the first step in generating NFTs with the Blend My NFTs add-on. For more information about what Enable Rarity does, how it works, and how it affects the attributes and variants in your NFT collection, check out the README file located here in the Blend My NFTs GitHub repository. You can scroll up here to the table of contents, go all the way down to notes on rarity and weighted variants, and there will be a lot of information to help you out and help you understand what that does. But for now, we're ready to move on to the next step. This next step is pretty straightforward. Here, we can select the type of NFTs that we want to generate, whether that be images, animations, or 3D models. If we select these, we can also select the format that these NFTs will be generated in. For right now, I'm going to select PNG for images, MP4 for my animations, and GLTF for 3D models. Down here, we can select the batch that we want to generate. Now, I'll show you more about this in a minute. Right now, we're just going to set this to one. Now we're all set to start generating our NFTs. There's just one more thing we have to do, and that is opening up the Blender system console. To do so, we can navigate up here and go to Window, and then Toggle System Console. Now if we open this, it will show us a whole bunch of information when we run Blend My NFTs. It will tell us when an NFT has been generated, what type of NFTs they are, and will also indicate if there are any errors that we encounter when we're trying to generate the NFTs. This window is pretty important if you're doing any debugging or if you're trying to figure out how to format your Blender file according to the rules. Because we're rendering with code, instead of manually clicking the render button, it's important to have this window open before we start a rendering process with the Blend My NFTs add-on, because Blender freezes up when code runs the rendering process. So, for that reason, we're going to have the Blender System Console open before we start rendering. With that all set, now that we have the Blender System Console open, all we need to do to start rendering is go back to Blender, and then click this Generate NFTs button. 
So let's click that. We'll go back here. We'll open up the system console again, and you can see that they're starting to render. So we got our first image here. We also have our first animation being rendered out here. And this green text will tell you that another, gen that another NFT is being generated. So now we see that we have two out of two. Up here, the first one was being generated. It's almost finished. There we go. So we get this nice little message down here. All, F all NFTs successfully generated and sent to this directory. And it's completed all renders in a given time frame. So that's how you generate the NFTs. Now that we've generated the first batch of NFTs, let's navigate to that save path that we first set in the first step and see what we generated. So let's minimize this. We're just going to go to that directory and it's right here. We see that there's a, a new folder called blend my NFTs output. This is where all the data, all the NFT images, animations, 3D models and metadata are going to be stored. So let's click this. We'll open this here. We have two files here, one called NFT underscore data and another called generated NFT batches. So the one that we're going to be interested in right now is this generated NFT batches. So let's open this up here. We're going to have a batch one folder. And then in here we have animations, uh, BM NFT metadata. I'll explain what that is in a second. Uh, and images and models. So I think the most visually appealing one to look at first would be the images. So let's check these out, see what we have here. So we just have two. Let's open this one up here and we can see we have a beautiful simplified cozy place example. Let's go to the next one. Similar result, we have uh, different variants that were selected here for each of the attributes. You can tell the difference between these two. There's a slightly different background, a slightly different border for the room, uh, different bed sheets, computer colors, um, and uh, door handles, I believe. So yeah, that's awesome. Let's check out the 3D models now. So let's go back, we'll go to that batch folder. Now let's go into this models directory here. Let's open up the first one. And there we go. So this is the 3D model version of it. It's much more exciting, in my opinion. You don't get those nice rendered out lighting because it isn't a rendering engine. It's just showing the blank textures, but that's okay. You need something like Unity to run that, um, but that's beyond the, the scope of this video. So um, yeah, this is it. Let's take a look at the animations now. So I set the animations to just one frame so it would render really quickly for this video, but you can do all sorts of fancy stuff with animations. Um, but that's beyond the scope of this video, but let's just take a look and see what it did. It'll look exactly like the images, but it'll be one frame long, so you, you won't even be able to perceive it. That's okay. They generated, which is awesome. Let's talk a bit about this Blend My NFTs data. So if we open this up here, you'll notice that it's not in any metadata format that you could upload to a candy machine or some kind of blockchain API. That's because this metadata right here is only for Blend My NFTs. It's so that Blend My NFTs can identify the NFTs that we just generated and be able to pass on the trait information as well as the attribute information to a proper uh, metadata format like ERC721 or the Cardano standard or the Solana Metaplex standard. We'll talk a bit more about metadata and how to generate it in our next step. Right now, I wanna go back to Blender and show you how to generate the second batch and then we can move on to our next step. All right, so I'm back in Blender here. We've generated the first batch. If we go back here to this create NFT data, we notice that our entire NFT collection size was set to four. Now we set the number of NFTs per batch to two. So that means that we can generate two batches of two NFTs. So let's set this here to two. So now we're generating the second batch. We have the same settings here. Let's go ahead and click generate NFTs. And there we go. We have the first NFT of our second patch being rendered right now. We have the animation that's just been generated as well. It's finishing up there. And now it's just created the 3D model. So when the 3D model is created, you'll get this big long screen of text. Don't worry about that. It's all Blender's backend doing fancy magic. Um, but when you see the screen text here, it'll mean that it's generating successfully. 
awesome. So we've now finished generating all two of our batches. We're ready to move on to the next step. All right, before we get into this final step, let's review what we have in our Blend My NFTs output folder. So let's navigate there. So let's go back here and go to the output folder, generated batches. Now we have two batches. So the first and the second batch are gonna be very similar to each other in that they're gonna have the same amount of content in them. They're gonna have an animations folder, an images folder, a 3D models folder, and a Blend My NFTs data folder. So let's open the second batch, just to confirm this. We also have images in there. We have animations as well as 3D models. Same thing goes for the first batch, animations, images, and 3D models. So that's all well and good. So let's head back to Blender and take a look at what we have to do for our next step. So now that we're back in Blender, we can now focus on this refactor batches and create metadata tab. Now in this step, we're gonna be compiling those two batches into one cohesive folder that will have each of those NFT files in order. We're also gonna reorganize the Blend My NFTs data files, as well as generate the metadata that we need to upload to a blockchain or a candy machine. So let's do that. So it's pretty simple to do. We just have to check off which metadata standard that we wanna follow. You can also do more than one. So we can say we want to do a Cardano NFT release, a Solana NFT release, and an ERC721 release, all with the same NFT files. And all the information will be the same across each NFT standard. So the next step is pretty easy. We're just clicking one button. That's all we have to do. So let's go ahead and click this refactor batches and create metadata button, and then we're done. We just have to verify this because you cannot go back after you refactor your batches. This is the point of no return, so think very carefully uh, and make sure that you've generated all your batches entirely. Uh, let's go ahead and do it. Awesome. So we get this little verification down here, batches refactored, metadata created. Let's go and see what that did. So let's go back to that same directory. And now we see that that generated NFT batches folder has now been changed to complete collection. So let's open this up here and see what we have. If you notice, we have a lot more files now. We have a Cardano metadata file, uh, ERC721 folder, and a Solana metadata folder. And if we open each of these up here, we can see that Solana, Card Solana Cardano, and ERC721 metadata have all been generated in the proper JSON file format. Another thing to note, each of the NFT content files have also been refactored. So each of their names are representative of the order that they take place in in the NFT collection itself. And that's it. You've now generated all the NFTs that you need and the metadata that goes along with them. You are now ready to upload to an NFT candy machine or a blockchain API of your choice. Blend My NFTs is a free to use open source add-on that has been in development for the past few months. Over that time period, a massive community on our Discord server has built up. If you run into any issues throughout this tutorial, the best place to go to solve those issues is our Discord server. We have a massive community that's willing to help, answer questions, and all sorts of things. So head on over there. You can find the link to the Discord server in the description. If you haven't already, please share this video and consider subscribing. I really appreciate it and it helps support this project. I just want to say a huge thank you from this Cozy Studio team to both our Discord and YouTube community. You all have shown so much support for what we're doing here, and it means the world to us. We have big plans for both this cozy studio and Blend My NFTs in 2022, and can't wait to share them with you. Lastly, another big thank you goes out to my brother Devlin, who created the Cozy Place example file for this tutorial, and my other brother Kalen, who created all the graphics for this video. They both did an amazing job, and I really could not have done this video without them. For now, that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this new Blend My NFTs UI edition and have a great 2022. See you next time.